Good afternoon, everybody. It's a beautiful day here in Somerset, New Jersey at the Northeast Conference headquarters. I'm Erin Bean, and today we're hanging out with St. Francis Brooklyn goalkeeper Jack Binks. How are you doing today, Jack? Are you ready? Tonight is a huge game. It's the number one and the number two seed in the NSCAA Northeast rankings. Um, so it's a huge game between St. Francis Brooklyn and St. Francis U. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm feeling pretty excited. I'm feeling, I'm feeling ready. Feeling good. So you said you were done with classes. What are you guys doing to get ready for the game today? Um, it's around 12, yeah, 12.30 now, so around 3 o'clock we'll officially meet and we'll all get together. We'll hang out, get some good food in us that uh, coach has already prepared for us. Um, and then after that, it's just team meeting, and we like a steady and calm approach to the game. Uh, none of us get too excited. Well, good. So let's get to know you a little bit more. Um, you're from England, and we know that you guys start young. You start playing soccer, football over there pretty young. What age did you start playing soccer, and did you always know that you were going to be a goalkeeper? Um, around around six or seven, we start. We play around three times a week at that at that age. And um, at the time, I was the tallest, so I think that's why I got thrown in goal. <laughs> Either that or I was the worst with my feet. Who knows? <laughs> Um, but all goalkeepers think that they can play on fields as a striker. I wish I could, but um, I think being in goal was my calling, and I haven't changed since. So this season so far you've had four shutouts, and it's actually been the past four straight games you've shut out, and St. Francis Brooklyn is on a seven-game uh, streak right now. So how do you think your play and goal has really affected the team and being a leader on the field? Um... Well, all I, all I can do is what's presented with me. I can't really change the, the game too much directly, but um, I've made a few good saves um, to help the guys as much as I can, but the defence also has been awesome. The defence has been solid, and I've got to give a lot of credit to those guys. Have, have you faced a lot of shots this season? Um, faced, I've faced quite a lot of shots. I think around yeah, maybe like five five saves a game or something like that. Um. Yeah, yeah. What's been your favorite save this season? Um. Do you have one that like really stands out? Uh. Yeah. I've. I personally like the one-on-one -on -one saves the most. Okay. Where I, where I can almost fly out at um at a striker's feet and meet the ball as he's kicking it. Um. I've made a couple of them so far. Um. I like those the most. Talk to me a little bit about your defense and how you've been able to manage them and who is a key player that's really helped you out on the field. Um, I've, got to, I've got to give a big shout out to Ricardo Milano. Uh, he's played every game. He's, he's been the only striker, to, um, only defender to play every game. Um, he's kind of been a little bit of an unsung hero at the minute and he's been, he's been unbelievable for us. So you, your team uh, features several players from all around the world. Kind of talk to me about the team chemistry and how you guys have really come together this season. You guys are having an awesome uh, beginning of the season, only two losses. How has that really played into the success of your team? Um, yeah, as far as the internationals, we're a very international team. Um, a lot of the guys don't speak English before they come here, but it's crazy. The guys are fluent in three months. Um, we have all nationalities, and it's almost this dysfunction they come together and it's just a beautiful chemistry that is created because they're all in the same boat they all are as uncomfortable as each other and it creates a really good atmosphere was it difficult to come from England and that style of play into collegiate play um, collegiate play is a lot different even non-conference to conference play is a lot different um, the feel of it in the air even just the fact that because there's so, there's so few games just the result, that's all that matters in conference play. Um, so I think everybody adapts, even from non-conference to conference. Now you guys have played some tough competition. You played fifth rank UConn at the time, um, and then now the Northeast Conference holds the top four spots in the rankings, uh, in the Northeast rankings. So it's St. Francis U at number one. You guys are at number two. Robert Morris is currently ranked third, and Fairleigh Dickinson is fourth. Who do you think will be the toughest uh, conference opponent to face up against? Um, I feel like tonight's going to be a tough game. 
and those guys always bring it when they play us. I don't know if it's a rivalry or or what it is, but it's quite exciting that they're coming to us this time. They're coming in our home fields. Um, I feel like this is really a big test game tonight. And if we prevail, then things things will be looking good. So talk to me a little bit about your home field. This season, uh, St. Francis Brooklyn is playing um, at the Brooklyn Bridge. It's a new field. You guys are playing under the lights tonight. Talk to me about this new home field advantage that you guys have. Uh, the new the new home field is beautiful. What can you say about it? It's it's got to be the best view in the world. Um, even for native New Yorkers coming to that field, they they're in awe looking at it. And uh, we're lucky to be able to train and play on it every single day. And just I feel I feel like this is this is our field. This is a, finally a field that that uh, the terriers can call home. So your coach actually called it one of the most unique settings in all of college sports. Do you think that this will really play into helping you guys recruit over the next few years? I think it's a great recruiting tool. Um, I didn't actually know about it before I came last year. Um, but if you send a picture to a, to a player saying, this is where you're going to be training every single day, then who, who wouldn't want to go down? Even the community who doesn't play, they're going to be down there supporting us. Um, young kids come down, and I think it's great for the for the youth coming through too. Now you started at Siena College, like you said, you didn't know um, prior that you were playing at the field. So what kind of brought you to St. Francis Brooklyn? Why did you decide to transfer? Um, the, the atmosphere from Albany to where I am in Brooklyn is a little bit different. I mean recruited as an international saying I'm going to be in New York and then not being in New York is something that <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't really sure about but now I'm in the city I'm in the Brooklyn Heights area which is beautiful um, and Brooklyn's a really up-and-coming area it's um, I'm glad to be on this side of the water to be honest and um, I think everybody who hasn't experienced Brooklyn is, is in for a shock so what do you like to do around Brooklyn? Kind of give us, if you're not on the field practicing or you're not in classes, what do you like to do in your free time? Um, all the guys actually actually live together. I live with about eight or nine other guys on the team. So we'll all hang out um, when we're not doing homework or, <laughs> or, ch or chilling. We're, um, there's a lot to do in the, in the community. You can go into near, nearby towns like Williamsburg and... Um, see some really nice areas. Do you? Um, does your family get to come home at all, or or come see you play at all? Um, they came out at Christmas. They didn't actually catch a game, but depending on their schedule, hopefully they'll come out to catch the latter half of this season, which is drawing to a close already. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they've been following at home as as much as you guys do, and as much as we do here to try and get the media out there. Um, they follow everything that you guys do. Good. Any C front row, plugging it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Are they going to watch tonight? Yeah, they'll be there. They've already messaged me. Oh, uh, great. My little sister just actually messaged me. She's pretty excited. Oh, good. Good. Well, she'll be able to watch this interview, too. Which it'll be on YouTube and on any C front row. Great. <laughs> so let's take it back to soccer. Do you okay. have any kind of pregame rituals or anything that you have to do before every game to get yourself ready? Um... I think it's a goalkeeper thing. We like to be pretty individual. I don't really like to warm up with the team before the game. I like to do my own thing. Um, because it's such a specialist position, I like to do my specialist stuff. Um, I'll always finish the warm-up first, and I'll just sit down the last 10 minutes, and I won't do much. Okay. So tonight, you guys are, uh, like we've said, is bringing SFUs coming to your campus, and yeah. uh, Nick Kolarak is second in the NEC with eight goals and is a big offensive threat. How do you guys plan to kind of contain him tonight? Um, as a back four, we've been doing we've been doing really well as a unit. Um, I don't I don't think that I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem. Uh, we have our two strikers as well who have amassed twelve goals between. So combine them both to get there. There's some unit up there. That's what I, that was my next question is, yeah. what's so, it like to play yeah. with them? Like, it's, it's, like you said, they're pretty, a pretty big threat. Um, yeah. they, I know they're leading the conference right now. Can you talk to me a little bit about 
how their offensive push has changed your uh, team? Um, well, even on our worst game, as long as we're keeping it at zero, we may not be playing too well in the middle, but two minutes later, those guys can score two goals. They're the kind of two dangerous pair where four guys need to mark each of them. And um, a few teams have cottoned on to that and have, have sometimes marked them out, but uh, I think they're getting one ahead at the minute. So. so what were your team's expectations coming into the season? Um, well, what were we? I think, th I think we were right down there at the beginning. I think, yeah. I, I think the NEC actually put us, a, um, put us near the bottom, which is good. Was because um, no expectations is is when you can actually progress the most. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think anyone wanted. It's like touching woods. No one wanted to say too much before we've actually done anything. Um, right. Yeah, we're just doing what we do all the time. Did you have any individual goals for yourself prior to the season? Um, I I have a clean I have a clean sheet goal. Um, I wanted to try and hit double figures. So. Still possible. It is still possible. Yes, it is. Uh, so before we go, kind of tell us about what you're majoring in and what you're uh, looking to do after you graduate. Yeah, I'm I'm double majoring in English and psychology. Wow. And I'm looking to do the MA program in psychology at St. Francis. Awesome. Um, I have I have another two years of eligibility, so I'm looking to stay here, do the and do the business and. Try and try and get that ring. I actually read um, an interview that you gave. Um, I think it was like a week ago or so, and you talked about how being in goal is really like um, management. Can you kind of talk to me about how that really trans that's a really great transferable skill? Um, just how being in goal has uh, helped you in life. Yeah, um, yeah. I, th I think sometimes you don't touch the ball for maybe thirty minutes, forty minutes, and um, so you've got to keep sharp mentally. You've got to really manage your back four. They might be getting a little bit, uh, a little lose con concentration too. So you've got to almost manage them. You've got to make sure they're in the right positions. And again, it is a specialist position. And um, it's like you're managing a team, which is very transferable to any, uh, to any job place out there. So... Big game tonight. We want to wish you the best of luck. It is number one St. Francis University versus number two St. Francis Brooklyn at 7 o'clock under the lights. Um, Jack, we want to thank you so much for hanging out with us today on game day. Thank can't you. believe you took the time to do that, so we really appreciate that. Um, so best of luck tonight. Thank you. All right, I'm Erin Bean with the Northeast Conference. And this was another Google Hangout.